All right, so get this. We're diving into a paper that explains Einstein's general relativity, but get this, using something as simple as, um, wait for it, the way light bends through a glass of water. Really? Yeah, sounds crazy, but it's brilliant. You know, it's fascinating how this paper brings together these totally different areas of physics. We're going to break down this idea, this optical mechanical analogy, and see how it works when we're talking about general relativity. You heard it right. We're talking about understanding things like how light bends around stars, and even those, you know, super precise radar measurements, all through this surprisingly simple analogy. So have you ever looked up at the night sky and just felt a little curious, or maybe you just want to sound really smart at your next physics club meeting? Yeah. This deep dive is for you. This paper, well... It gets into some pretty complex physics, but the core concept is actually surprisingly intuitive, and we're going to break it down step by step. Okay, let's unpack this. First things first, the optical mechanical analogy. What exactly are we talking about? Okay, so imagine a ball rolling down a hill, right? Its potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy. Right. So this analogy is basically saying that we can find counterparts to these mechanical concepts in the way that light behaves. So instead of a ball, we have like a beam of light, and instead of a hill, we have a lens. Precisely. The way light bends or even slows down in a medium, like, you know, a glass lens, can actually be described using equations that are very, very similar to those used to describe a ball rolling down a hill. Okay, that's kind of mind-blowing, but it's more than just, you know, a cool idea, right? Yeah. It actually has practical applications. Absolutely. This analogy isn't just some theoretical curiosity. It's been used to solve you know, practical problems in both classical optics and mechanics for centuries. That's incredible. But here's my question. How do we go from this pretty simple analogy to something as complex as general relativity? That's like going from building with Legos to, well, building an actual spaceship. Well, that's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. Could this simple analogy, which is so powerful in these simpler scenarios, could it hold up in the extreme environment of, say, a black hole? You know. Hold on, are you saying that gravity, this warping of space-time, can be thought of as like a giant lens in space? That's the beauty of it. This paper really dives deep into how the gravitational field around a massive object like a star acts like a refractive medium, and it bends the path of light, just like a lens does. Okay, now my mind is officially blown. But how on earth did they even begin to test this? It's not like we can just hold a giant magnifying glass up to a black hole and see what happens. You're right. It, well, it's not quite that simple. No. They started with a mathematical framework to describe the gravitational field around a perfectly round, non-rotating object. Oh. And they used what's called the Schwarzschild metric, yeah. which is a solution to Einstein's field equations. Yeah. Uh... And trust me, those equations are not for the faint of heart. Yeah, I'll take your word for it on that one. So they took this Schwarzschild thing and plugged it in. Where, exactly? So they used it to derive something like a gravitational refractive index. Mm -hmm. and, and get this, the equation for this index, you can find it in the paper. It's equation nine. It's surprisingly simple, especially considering what it's describing. And, and it basically tells you how much gravity bends light at any given point in space. So the more massive an object, the higher its gravitational refractive index and the more it bends light. Exactly. Think of it like comparing a magnifying glass to like a car windshield. Yeah. The thicker the glass, the more light bends as it passes through. Right. And this bending of light, this is one of the key predictions of general relativity. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, right? We're talking about one of the first tests of Einstein's theory, the bending of starlight around the sun. Absolutely. And the paper uses this optical mechanical analogy to explain that bending. And and they introduce this concept called zero total energy. And this, this is where the analogy really shines. Okay, tell me more about this zero energy business. It sounds a little paradoxical when we're talking about something as intensely energetic as a star. I know, right? It seems a bit counterintuitive. But think about it this way. Light doesn't have mass, right? Right. So, in a sense, it doesn't cost any energy for light to travel through space, even through a gravitational field. Mm. And this zero energy equation, when it's applied to light, it actually gives us the general relativity equation for the bending of light. Wow. It's wild, right? It's like finding a hidden message that perfectly explains the tides. So this paper is saying that this zero energy concept, this thing derived from the simple analogy, can actually predict how much gravity will bend a beam of light. It's like we just found this secret code that unlocks, I don't know, a deeper level of understanding gravity. So we've got 
gravity acting like a lens, bending light. Mm -hmm. What other, like, optical illusions does the universe have in store for us? Buckle up, because we're not done yet. See, we've been talking about how gravity changes the shape of the path light takes, right? right? But there's another piece to this puzzle. we got to talk about how long it takes for light to actually travel along that curved path. Okay. Enter. Radar echo delay. Ha, ah, yes. Bouncing signals off planets and then measuring how long it takes for those signals to come back to us. Another way to test general relativity. You got it. And guess what? what? That same zero energy equation we were just talking about, it's involved here too. No way. So we can use the same idea to understand both how gravity bends light, A and D, how it affects how long it takes for light to travel? Absolutely. That's what's so cool about this analogy. The paper actually lays out how this whole zero energy concept, when you combine it with the idea of a gravitational refractive index, well, it gives us the general relativity equation for radar echo delay. Wow. It's equation 27, if you want to go check it out in the paper. This equation really is like the Swiss army knife of general relativity. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's bring this down to Earth for a second, pun intended. Yeah. Did scientists actually measure this delay, like in the real world? Oh, yeah, they did. A, a really famous example is when they bounced radar signals off of Mercury yeah. when it was at its closest point to the sun. So because Mercury was closer to the sun's gravity, well, does that mean the radar signals took longer to get back to Earth? than if the sun wasn't there. And exactly. Sort of like that light slowing down thing. Precisely. And the amount of delay they measured matched up perfectly with what general relativity predicted. Man. It's experiments like this that really solidify our understanding of Einstein's theory. This is incredible. This like seemingly simple analogy is giving us these amazing tools to understand the universe. But I have to ask, is it too good to be true? I mean, there have to be some limitations to this analogy, right? It can't explain everything, can it? You're exactly right. The authors of this paper, they do point out some limitations. Like, yeah. It works really beautifully for situations like the ones we've been talking about, you know, yeah. where you have a static, spherically symmetrical gravitational field. Okay. Like the kind you'd find around a perfectly round, you know, not rotating object. Have to. But the universe, you can be a messy place. Oh, tell me about it. Black holes spinning almost at the speed of light galaxies, warping space. Yeah. Things get complicated fast. Exactly. And when you start dealing with these more complex gravitational fields, ones that aren't as, I don't know how to put it, neat as the Schwarzschild solution, well, this analogy, it starts to break down. It can't really capture everything that's going on in those more extreme situations. So it's like we have a key that unlocks a few doors, but not the whole house. What a great way to put it. This paper you know, it's not trying to replace general relativity altogether. It's right. more about, it's like, it's giving us this totally new, elegant way of looking at certain aspects of gravity. And that in itself opens up some really exciting questions. Ooh, like what? Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> well, for example, we see this analogy works really well for light bending around stars, right? Right. But could we use it to describe how planets move around those stars? Mm -hmm. Or what happens to light that's actually traveling inside a star yeah. where gravity is much, much stronger? Whoa. Those are some big, exciting questions. This paper really flipped my perspective on gravity. It makes you realize just how important it is to think outside the box when it comes to this stuff, you know? Yeah, totally. It reminds us that even when we're dealing with something as complex as general relativity, sometimes the simplest ideas can be the most illuminating. Okay, so... Before we uh, before we launch ourselves too far into orbit on this one, let's take a minute to touch back on what we've learned about this mind-blowing optical mechanical analogy. Sure. Take us home. <laughs> so we began with this really intuitive idea that the way light bends as it passes through a lens, well, it's surprisingly similar to the way a ball rolls down a hill. Right. And from there, we explored how gravity, especially around a really massive object like a star, can basically act like a giant lens in space, bending the path that light takes. Yeah, and we even got into that super cool concept of zero total energy for light and how that helps explain not just the bending of light around these massive objects, but also, like we were saying, this really fascinating thing called radar echo delay, remember, yeah. where the signals were bouncing around, they take a little bit of detour because of gravity's influence. Yeah, and while this analogy does have limitations, like we said, it works best in those nice, neat gravitational scenarios. Right. But even so, it really opens up our minds to new ways of thinking about some of the 
Well, the biggest questions in physics. Exactly. It really makes you wonder, like, what other everyday occurrences might hold the key to unlocking even bigger cosmic secrets? I don't know. Maybe there's an analogy out there that can help us wrap our heads around dark matter mm -hmm. or even, like, finally crack the code of quantum gravity. It's a fascinating thought, isn't it? The idea that, you know, somewhere in the ordinary, everyday things we see around us, the way, you know, the way coffee brews or, or how about how leaves fall from trees, Yeah, that somewhere in all that, there might be these hidden clues to the universe's grand design. It's pretty mind blowing. So to all of our listeners out there, we'll leave you with this. Keep that curiosity alive. The next time you're, you know, looking around at the world, ask yourself, what if this totally normal everyday thing is actually a clue to something much, much bigger? What if it's part of the answer to understanding the cosmos? You never know what you might discover.